Hi, and welcome to this clip looking at a worked entropy of neutralization question. So looking at our question, the first thing they want you to do is to define the term entropy change of neutralization. Whenever you see define the term as the command words, that basically means you need to recall the meaning from your flashcards. So in this case, it's going to be the entropy change which accompanies the formation of one mole of liquid water when an acid reacts with a base. So the next part of the question is to write the ionic equation for the change that represents entropy of neutralization. So thinking about the ions that come from an acid, H+, and the ions that come from a base, OH-, those two combine together in equimolar quantities to make one mole of water, as per the definition that we've just come up with. If you were to take any uh, neutralization and write out the equation for it, and then get rid of the spectator ions to write an ionic form of that equation, the simplest ionic equation would be what we've put down here. H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous gives you H2O as a liquid. The third part of the question is a bit more involved. You've got uh, two samples of liquid. One is an acid of two mole per decimeter cubed, 25 centimeters cubed of it. The other is the same volume, but this time uh, the same concentration, but it's a so base and alkali. So they're placed in different plastic cups and their temperatures are recorded. The initial temperature is 90 degrees, 19.0, and after we mix them together so that they can react, the maximum temperature of the reaction mixture ended up as 31.9 degrees C. The density of the solution is one gram per centimeter cubed, so the combined volume, 50 um, centimeters cubed, means the mass is going to be 50 grams. The specific heat capacity of this solution is the same as for water, 4.18 joules per kelvin per gram. So let's start by working out the value for Q. And you can see that I've converted it to kilojoules because the enthalpy neutralization, which is what we're required to actually calculate, is always going to be expressed in kilojoules per mole, not joules per mole. So checking the equation, you can see that everything is equimolar. So I'm going to choose the moles of acid to work out the moles of water, and I get 0.05. So putting that into my delta nu H calculation, I apply minus Q, because it's an exothermic change, remembering that the temperature went up. So therefore, that gives me minus 59.382 kilojoules per mole. Final part of the question asks us to consider 100 centimetres cubed of HCl and NaOH. So taking into account different quantities of liquids, if you alter the volume of the liquid that's being heated using the same reaction, the temperature change will alter as well. A higher volume of liquid will require more energy, so therefore will exhibit a smaller temperature change. A smaller volume of liquid will heat up more quickly, so that will exhibit a larger temperature change. So applying this to Q equals mc delta t, and remembering that the density of the solution is still 1 gram per centimeter cubed, we can assume that the mass is increased from 50 to 100, and therefore you'll get a corresponding drop in the change in temperature. So those two changes will cancel each other out, meaning that Q will stay the same. So taking that into account for the delta mute H calculation, minus Q over number of moles of water, because it's an enthalpy change um, in terms of one mole of water, Q stays the same as we've already worked out, N is going to be one mole of H2O, so therefore delta newt H will remain unchanged. I hope this has been a useful clip uh, taking you through this type of question. Until next time, thanks for listening and see you soon.